Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of the Gigabyte Z68X UD7 B3 motherboard featuring the 1155 socket and the Z68 chipset which supports Intel second generation core Sandy Bridge processors. We're going to start off with a closer look at the box to go over some of the included features and the Z68 chipset does support EFI technology for a touch BIOS which uh, Gigabyte has set up with this board. Also Z68 supports Intel's smart response technology which means that you can combine a uh, small SSD with a mechanical hard drive to increase your hard drive's performance. Of course, as mentioned, we support the Intel second generation core processors due to the Z68 chipset. Bear in mind though that this motherboard does not support the iGPU feature of the second generation core Sandy Bridge processor, so you will need a discrete graphics card. Uh, also going along here, we have uh, SLI ready. It has a 24 phase power design. It features dual CPU power uh, with two power engines and of course uh, Gigabyte's feature that they have on a lot of their motherboards which uses uh, twice the copper in the PCB and also high quality capa uh, capacitors, MOSFETs and ferrite core chokes. Uh, going back down here at the bottom, uh, that's actually the same thing. The caps MOSFETs and chokes, all high quality, and then we have uh, 108 decibel signal to noise ra ratio sound, uh, which supports Blu-ray playback, as well as booting from a 3 ter terabyte plus hard drive, ATI Crossfire X technology, and Dolby Home Theater sound. And that's enough for the outside of the box. Let us go inside and see what accessories are included. Of course, we have a nice view screen there, so you can look at your motherboard before you take it out of the box. Here is the UD7 motherboard itself. We're going to set that aside for now and we'll go over the motherboard in detail in just a moment. But first, let's check out the included accessories. All right. We have the full motherboard manual, which you should keep on hand while you're doing your build so you can reference all of the specs of the slots and everything. We have a driver CD. It's usually most effective to go to the manufacturer's website to download the latest drivers rather than loading them off the disk. So bear that in mind. We have a multilingual uh, installation guide there. We have a warning here because there are two types of Intel Core sockets. There's an 1155 and 1156. 1155 is a newer one supported by Z68 so make sure you get a socket 1155 CPU to go with this, not an older 1156. We have of course the input output shield uh, to go on the back of your case. We have a Dolby Home Theater decal, a Gigabyte decal. You can also put those on your case if you're so inclined. We have a three-way SLI bridge. So if you're going with NVIDIA video cards and you want to set up three-way SLI, that is supported by this motherboard. And we have the rest of the stuff. All right, so here we have, uh, ah, we have an eSATA Actually, it looks like two eSATA uh, cables there for your eSATA needs. We have, you know what? I'm just going to open this stuff up so we can get a better look at it because I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see this through this sort of clouded packaging. All right, so I think I have figured this out. They're pretty much setting you up with an external solution for connecting hard drives. So starting right here, you have a bracket that can go in a PCI slot on the back of your computer, uh, which you will route over a Molex power to your power supply and a couple serial ATA port or a couple serial ATA cables over to the ports on the motherboard. This here is an external cord that you plug into the Molex plug on this bracket that will give you a couple serial ATA power plugs. These are both eSATA to standard SATA plugs. So you would plug the eSATA port onto the eSATA plug, which is right here. Make sure I plug it in correctly, there we go. And then you plug that into a hard drive that you have outside the computer. So basically, you could plug in two hard drives externally to your computer and have them routed directly to the Gigabyte motherboard there. So that is a nice little external solution for hard drives that you might need to plug in. Also, we have some included standard serial ATA cables. Uh, there are four here total. Two of them have L brackets on one end. 
We also have a two-way SLI bridge, so if you're going to set up a two-way SLI, you can use that little bridge right there. And then finally, we have a USB 3.0 front panel bracket. That's a three and a half inch bracket, so it will fit into a floppy bay that you have on your case, and you will just route this plug to the USB 3.0 plug on the motherboard, which is right there. So there is a full look at the Z68X UD7 from top to bottom. You can see these nice big heat sinks they have here with the, some galvanized silver and gold plating on them. Uh, I'm just going to sort of go over the ports and everything on the board. I'm going to start down here at the bottom and sort of work my way across. Uh, so first off, you'll see right here we have a debug LED. That's very handy for getting your system up and running. If it freezes at all, you'll have a LED indicator there that will help you a lot with uh, debugging and finding out what might be wrong. Right here we can see our um, motherboard front panel ports. They're all color coded in there so you can figure out which one is that, which one is which. Next to that we have a couple USB 2.0 front panel headers. Next to that is a fan uh, out header so you can connect a case fan. We have two USB 3.0 front panel headers there so you can run one up to the front and one to the back if you have that capacity for on your case. Moving along over here, we have a 4-pin PWM fan, fan header, another 3-pin fan header, and then finally right there we have a firewire out, which is covered with a little block to make sure you don't accidentally plug in a USB uh, header to that. Um, moving up here, we have all of our caps and, and chip for uh, the sound card, integrated sound, and then right up here is actually our uh, front panel audio connector, so you can route that to your front panel mic and headphone jacks. Here we have all of our PCI slots and you can see right here up top we have a single slot, a single speed PCI Express slot and then below that we have the ones that you're going to connect your graphics card to. This one here and this one here, the double slot spacing, are full 16 speed PCI Express slots. You'll want to plug your video card into the top one if you're just running a single card. Uh, you can run three cards by connecting to this 16 speed slot, this 16 speed slot, and this 8 speed slot. This here is also an 8-speed PCI Express slot, and then we have two legacy standard PCI slots right there uh, towards the bottom. Moving right along, over here we have our uh, heat spreader for the Z68 chipset. That Z68 chipset is also controlling several of these uh, serial ATA ports right here. The two black, or the four black ones that you see here are serial ATA revision 3, I'm sorry, revision 2, that is 3 gigabits per second. The white ones here are serial ATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second, and then these gray ones are, are controlled by a Marvell 88SE9128 chip. These are also serial ATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second ports. Let us continue moving up the side over here on the right. Here we have our 24 pin power connector for motherboard power. Right above that is another fan pin header. Above that we have a surface mounted power switch, so very handy if you're doing an external build. You can turn the system on and off using that surface mounted switch. Next to that we have our four DDR3 slots. Uh, these DDR3 slots are for 1.5 volt DDR3 DIMMs. It supports up to 32 gigabytes of non-ECC system memory and also supports overclocked memory speeds up to 2133 megahertz. Uh, bear in mind, you will need to find some 8 gig non-ECC uh, memory modules if you really want 32 gigs, and those are kind of hard to find right now. But it is available in the future. Right up here at the top, we have a, a CPU fan header that you will uh, connect to your system's CPU fan. And speaking of CPU, here is the slot right here, uh, 1155 socket, which will support Intel Sandy Bridge processors. Uh, all around ha there we have the DRM, I'm sorry, the, not DRM, the VRM area, so voltage regula regulation for power heading over to the motherboard. You can see all of our caps and MOSFETs under there. And we have a heat pipe design uh, for all of the coolers here that will keep all of the VRM modules nice and cool, especially if you're overclocking. That is also a 24 phase power design for feeding power to the CPU. Finally, right up here at the top, we have our 8 pin. Uh, ECS power connector, and then one, uh, one additional uh, case fan header right there next to it. Let us close with a look at the input outputs on the back of the board. Starting over here, we have a PS2 port for mouse or keyboard. Uh, we have several USB 3.0 ports here. You can see the blue ones. Two are right here. 
then we have one, two, three, four more right there. Uh, right here we have a coax audio out or toss link, whichever one you prefer. We have a firewire plug right there. These red plugs here are also USB ports. They are USB 2.0 and they feature the enhanced four times the power for super fast charging of your USB devices. Apart from the firewire port right here, we also have a mini firewire. And then down here on the bottom, we have two more eSATA ports. These are powered eSATA, so USB SATA combo ports. These are also controlled by a Marvel 88SE9128 chip, so they are eSATA 6 gigabit per second ports. So very nice to have those. Up here we have two gigabit LAN ports. And then finally, right over here on the right, we have our audio outs for the integrated audio on the motherboard. And that's going to wrap it up for our unboxing and overview. Once again, this has been the Gigabyte Z68X UD7 B3 motherboard, socket 1155, featuring the Z68 chipset from Intel. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more, please subscribe to our Newegg TV YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and we will see you next time.